Have I got a good one for you today, folks. In Graveyard Keeper, life is full of surprises. One day you're peacefully farming, and the next you're serving burgers made from human meat at a local witch burning. One moment you're sprucing up your graveyard, and the next you're digging up its occupants, turning them into zombies, and forcing them into manual labor. And don't even get me started on what's happening in the cellar. Join me on my first 100 days of Graveyard Keeper. Our story starts just like many others, with our hero being isekai into a new world, where he is now a graveyard keeper for... whatever reason. Our first order of business is to dig up a skull in the back named Jerry. He will act as our guide through this new world, although he himself doesn't really seem to understand what's going on a lot of the time. He leads us to meet a donkey who will periodically deliver bodies to us that we need to take care of. So I take the body down to the morgue and perform a quick autopsy on him, which involves me taking some meat from his body. Why? No one really knows, not even our guide Jerry, but it might be profitable at some point. After hastily burying the body, a bishop introduces himself, apparently my new boss, and informs me that I will have to fix up the graveyard before they can open up the church again. He also lets me know that I can turn that burial certificate into some cash if I bring it into town. I quickly clear out some of the old dead shrubbery and fix up some of the tombstones in the graveyard, but I eventually run out of tools before I can raise its quality level to the desired five needed to open up the church. The bishop comes by every seven days, so I'll have until then to make sure this place is in tip-top shape. I take the long walk down to the village, where I'm introduced to the barkeep and apparently town mayor of sorts. He explains that he can only purchase the meat I took from the body if I get a royal meat stamp. However, there is a shady character named Snake who could potentially give me a forged stamp. So if I ever want to start making money from me, I'll have to find this character. Fortunately, I'm still able to turn in the burial certificate for some quick change before being sent off on yet another task to deliver a letter to the blacksmith. He, naturally, gives me a sword and asks me to take care of some slimes in the back. Every game can't help itself but have a slime as its first enemy, huh? After taking down the slimes, I make my way back to the bar and am rewarded with an ice-cold beer. Perfect for Jerry, who was asking for one the last time I saw him. After giving him the beer, he reveals to me that there is a way home. Apparently, I can open up some kind of portal, but I'll have to talk to the astrologer or find a book in the library to find out more information. That's all nice and whatever, but I do have a job to do. I need to improve the quality of my graveyard. Stat. In order to do that though, I'll need to learn some skills in the tech tree. The way the tech progression works is I gain points by doing certain actions. Red points are typically for physical labor things like cutting down a tree or mining an ore. Green points are typically for foraging or anything to do with plants. And blue points are for more spiritual things like studying the human body or crafting graveyard decorations. Our first goal is to unlock the carpenter's workbench, needed if I ever want to start fixing the graveyard tombstones. I chug the last energy potion that I got from the blacksmith and get to work, building workstations, chopping down trees, and just generally doing some really manly stuff. Eventually, I take a look in the cellar, where we see our first glimpse of Snake, who approaches some kind of iron gate. Unfortunately, there's a ton of debris between us, so I'll have to clear that out before I can talk to him. After cleaning up some of the cellar, I'm completely out of energy and finally head to bed. Upon awakening, I see a ghost, who asks me to remove a body from the graveyard that all of the other ghosts have been complaining about. Being a good landlord, I quickly evict the body, stealing some meat and tossing him into the river. Afterwards, it's back to work, chopping down trees and getting closer to my goal of fixing the graveyard. I go ahead and take a little mid-morning nap before waking up to the ghost once again, who informs me that the quality of the person in the graves can actually affect the quality of the graveyard as a whole. Meaning, if someone has been very sinful in their life, I probably don't want them in my graveyard. Something I'll have to look out for when I get another body. I finally complete the carpenter's workbench, just in time for another body to arrive. Unfortunately, I run out of energy before I can do anything, so it's back to bed for me. Energy is already a massive problem, especially when the days go by so fast. So, I start making some bread to hopefully give me more energy throughout the day. Back on the autopsy table, I decide to leave the meat on the body, since taking it out will end up lowering the quality of the body itself. 
I bury it back in the newly opened grave, saving some time and crafting a new headstone just for him. I head back into town for a few reasons. For one, I need to get a garden certificate so I can start growing my own food. For two, turning in the burial certificates for some money. And for three, I need to purchase some materials from the blacksmith. I also stole some berries along the way, an easy way to get some quick energy. It's a long way from home to this town, so if I have to go, I have to make the most of the trip. When I return, I find yet another body has been delivered. So I decided to take out the fat and blood to increase the quality of the body before placing it in my graveyard. The next morning, Jerry informs me that the Inquisitor is visiting Witch Hill, right next to my house. After quickly building an entire furnace and mining all the iron ore nearby, I went ahead and visited Witch Hill. Apparently once a week he would be coming by and asks to be my friend. Not wanting any new enemies, I agreed, and was told he'd have some tasks for me the next time we spoke. Looking forward to it. When I get back, I quickly make some fresh tombstones and go over to the graveyard. Looks like it's finally time to start giving it a makeover. I take care of the new body that arrived and add some tombstones to the fresh graves from before, as well as adding some new tombstones to the other graves after taking a quick sleep. This gives my graveyard a quality of six, above the threshold to open up the church, just in time for the visit from the bishop tomorrow. Finally, the bishop arrives and opens up the church, giving me a new duty I need to perform, a sermon. These sermons will grant me faith, a powerful currency that's quite limited early in the game, so I'll have to use it wisely. Once a week, I will be able to perform these sermons for faith, and to enhance the amount I get per sermon, I'll have to improve the quality of my church and graveyard. I enter the basement of the church, knocking down the old bookshelves and acquiring everything I need to study an object, which requires faith. Early game, I only plan on doing this for blue points, since at first there isn't really any other way to earn them. I go ahead and study blood and fat, earning me 40 blue points, but costing two of my faith orbs. I then make the grand discovery that crafting stone grave fences grants you blue points as well, and the resources required to build this isn't really that hard to get. So this will be a welcome source of points for me. I upgrade some more graves before heading to bed, ending my first week, all things going pretty well. Next order of business is finally talking to Snake, the man who's been chilling in my basement for about a week now. Unfortunately, he won't actually talk to me until I get some more confidence, aka faith. I then discover a shortcut through the cellar that leads me directly to the town, making it significantly more convenient to make this trip. I enter the bar and meet Miss Charm, who also won't talk to me until I give her five faith. By talking to her though, I should be able to eventually acquire a stamp and be able to start selling meat to the town. I'm then pulled over by a poet who claims he'll write me a story if I give him some paper and ink, which is surprisingly difficult to get a hold of. For now, my best bet to get these materials is from the astrologer, but he's only available on moon days. I head down to the farm and pick up some seeds, ready to start farming. However, there's a perk that I want to get that will allow me to have better harvests, so I start saving my points to pick that one up. When the donkey arrives to give me a body, he discovers I now own the church and was making money from it, calling me a capitalist pig and leaving a gift for me. Without our comrade donkey, our body supply could take a hit. I bury the body and continue trying to make some bread hoping that the added energy will allow me to make the most of the days. I spend the next day mostly just upgrading some things around the graveyard, mostly just for the added points. I will eventually have to continue increasing the quality of the graveyard anyway, so no reason not to do it now, especially when I'm attempting to make enough points to start farming. I went ahead and officially became a recognized citizen by the royal services, benefits including being able to buy a royal stamp and building permit both of which were far too expensive for me right now. I was also able to finally get the perk I wanted, so I began planting my farm, eager to have some fresh food. I also began the process of upgrading some of my tools, since increasing their efficiency would also mean I'd have to spend less energy on tasks, something that would be greatly appreciated. The following day goes quickly, as I immediately expend all of my energy crafting things and need to take a second sleep through the night. Thanks to this though, I was able to build some necessary decorations for the church, which will enhance the amount of faith I gain during my sermons, hopefully meaning I can take care of talking to Snake as soon as possible. I additionally get some more carrot seeds after finally bothering to scoop up the donkey poop, 
increasing the size of my humble farm. Sadly, due to all of the preparations I've been making for the next sermon day, I end up missing out on talking to the astrologer, meaning it'll be another week before I have a chance to advance that storyline. If you're enjoying the video so far, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. This really helps out the channel and I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks. The day we've all been waiting for, the bishop immediately gives me a new task to craft 20 bowls for a food drive, another task I'll have to complete during the week. The sermon itself goes perfectly, everyone's super impressed by my words and clearly leaving the church motivated and excited for my next sermon. With my newly found faith, I run down to see Snake once more. This time he offers me instructions for the key, which I have yet to find. However, with these instructions, hopefully I'll be able to get this door open right away. I additionally have my first harvest, crafting a compost heap so I can enhance my yields in the future. I finally make it into town during the days when the merchant is here, and we strike a deal. He'll allow me to use the garden so long as I provide for him my first harvest. Coincidentally, I brought all of the vegetables from my first harvest with me, completing this little mission, meaning I am officially allowed to use my own garden. He then says we can continue to work together if I get a trade license, which would allow us to basically corner the vegetable market and conquer the kingdom or something like that, I don't know. This is expensive though, so it will probably be a while before I'm able to talk to him again about this. I take the peat, which will hopefully allow for better yields as well as more seeds being returned to me after each harvest. I then expand my workspace so that I have room for a potter's wheel, allowing me to craft those bowls that the bishop wanted. Then, finally after days of not showing up, the donkey shows up, this time with a list of demands. He will no longer be giving me any bodies for free. Now I must supply him with carrots every single day. Thank god I started working on that farm. Additionally, I have to grease his wheels, meaning I needed to find oil, and fast. Fortunately, I know just the guy to get me some oil, a homeless man on the edge of town living in a pot. I grab some honey before I go, trading it for a cake recipe, which I won't be able to craft for quite a while. With this though, I quickly oil up the donkey's wheels and deliver the carrots, meeting his demands and securing my supply of bodies. I butcher this body pretty hard, so instead of adding him to my graveyard, I get a blueprint for cremation and turn him into ash, ensuring my graveyard maintains its high quality level. Fortunately, from his butchered body, I was able to get his skull and deliver it to the astrologer, who was only willing to talk to me if I managed to get him one. He goes on to explain that the previous keeper had disappeared one day, and was always talking about a portal. Apparently, he had a journal, which is presumably behind the gate in my cellar. Fortunately for us, the astrologer happens to have this key on him. With the key and its instructions, after my next sermon, I should be able to get that door open. Perfect timing too, since today is sermon day. The bishop comes and dumps three more requests on me after I deliver the bowls. This time requesting, I improve the graveyard quality to 30, improve the quality of the church to 20, and give him four quality fish fillets. Fortunately for me, I bought quality fish fillets from the fishermen by the lighthouse while I was there, and my graveyard is already above the quality threshold, so right off the bat there's two requests done. I have also been using pretty much all of my energy every day to craft the required materials for the church decorations, so after placing those down, that was complete as well. Now, he promises to increase the size of my church, all I need to do is get a building permit, which costs 20 silver. Unfortunately, I am nowhere near that amount, so it looks like I'll have to find some ways to make more money, since selling burial certificates clearly isn't going to cut it. I perform the sermon, gaining a whopping 7 faith, quickly researching the key and finally having the active key in my hands. Unfortunately, we'll have to wait for Snake to arrive on green days, but once he's here, we'll be able to reveal the mystery of the cellar. I use the remainder of my faith to impress Miss Charm, who gives me some fake coins she wants me to throw in Snake's face. Sure, why not? I spend the day fixing up my garden and buying some more seeds. I decide to take this day to explore the other side of the broken bridge to the left of the map. It reveals a massive swamp area filled with iron, so I make sure to mine everything I see and make my way through the maze. I additionally pick up some hiccup grass while I'm here, something that the merchant was asking about the last time we spoke. In the center of the maze I meet Clotho, a witch with amnesia, who asks me to either craft her a potion or speak to a blacksmith for a cauldron. Since I don't know anything about alchemy, it looks like I'll have to figure out how to get her that cauldron. 
Snake finally arrives, and after throwing the coins in his face for Miss Charm, we finally open up the gate. It's here that our hero immediately gets himself killed by a trap going for the diary. We end up resurrecting back in our home. After returning to the cellar, Snake is just as surprised to see us as you'd expect. Upon realizing we're immortal, Snake requests us to enter the dungeon and acquire a bucket of blood and some bloody fingernails for him. Don't ask why, I have absolutely no idea. Since I'm low energy, I decide to put off the dungeon for now. In the next room, I meet Gunter, a zombie chained to the wall who immediately asks me to hit him so he can feel something. I guess the devs were feeling a little kinky when they were designing this section, I'm, I'm not really sure. He explains that with the zombie juice, I can create zombies that will automatically mine things like wood or iron, making my life a lot easier. He says I can find one of his zombie friends buried by the quarry, so looks like that'll be the next place I explore. And of course, I grab the journal before I leave. Can't forget to give this to the astrologer the next chance I get. The next day, I dive into the dungeon, which is swarming with enemies. And unfortunately, the day cycle does not pause while you're down here, to my dismay. I smash some barrels to get quite a few random seeds and other knickknacks, but in my current state, without armor, a proper weapon, or food, I eventually intentionally let myself die just to get out of here. I'll have to try that again after properly preparing. With the remainder of the day, I visit the astrologer with the journal, who asks for like 50 things, like literally asks for 6 items all at once, so I, I don't know, I, I'll worry about it later I guess. The next day, I take to the mountains to try and find the zombie in quarry. I end up looking around for a while before realizing it's the mountains on the other side of the river, wasting a good amount of time before finally making it there. I end up not really seeing anything and leave quite confused on what to do. I decide to head back into town to speak to Miss Charm again, who this time requests that I acquire a necklace from Snake that she had apparently paid him to get for her. I'm sensing a lot of tension between Snake and Miss Charm. I don't know why I have to be the middleman between them, but I, I guess this is what the game is. I meet back up with a merchant and give him the hiccup grass that he asked for, but he ends up losing his sense of taste, demanding that I speak to the witch Clotho about how to cure him. More importantly, however, I purchase the teleport stone from the barkeep, which makes this game significantly better and more enjoyable to play. With the stone, I can just teleport to pretty much any location in the game instantly, and it doesn't even cost anything. It has a small cooldown on it after you use it, but it's so minuscule it might as well not even be there. Why the devs didn't make it more obvious how useful this is, I have absolutely no idea. Walking from one place to another takes literally the entire day. With this stone, I can accomplish so much more. I go ahead and mine some coal and sell it to the blacksmith in town for all the silver he has, giving me a total of 13, well on my way to my goal of 20. I finally manage to find the zombie buried under the rubble near the mountain pass, and begin setting up the quarry so that we could have a consistent iron supply coming into the home. Finally, after a lot of troubleshooting and research, I placed the zombie by the quarry and he got to work, collecting iron and coal for me so hopefully I won't have to worry about running out anymore. The process is quite slow though, but thankfully I have a good amount of iron stockpiled anyway. I also attempt to speak to the Inquisitor today, but I just barely missed him. Maybe next week. Next, I spend most of the day trying to find easier sources of energy. I have a pretty large amount of beets laying around, so after picking up the recipes for beet slices from the farmer, I began cooking those in the oven. After my daily sermon, I scavenged up enough money to afford a building permit which I quickly hand over to the bishop, excited to start building my new church. I expected it not to be ready until next week, but it was just instantly built right away, so I guess I can't complain. The bishop then additionally requests that I have rightful citizenship papers, which of course cost more money. I end up being forced to sell some of my sliced beets to make some money, barely making it to the bishop in time with the papers. He then sets our next goal for the church, a cathedral. All we need to do is reach 50 quality in the church and 200 quality in the graveyard, which at the moment seems kind of impossible, but hopefully with some decorations we unlock later, this won't seem so bad. I additionally finally have enough tech points to create the circular saw, which will additionally allow me to connect the tunnels between the cellar, church basement, and morgue, making it a lot easier to navigate around my home. The next day was mostly spent just gathering the materials to fix up the passageways underground, as well as getting ready to set up a resurrection table in the morgue, 
aiming to make some more zombies. With a brand new zombie at my disposal, I decided to set up a wood farm, since I'm constantly running out of wood and it's quite the pain having to gather so many logs every time I want to build something. This setup is a bit more complicated though, as I craft a massive wood farm, which can actually hold multiple zombies and have them do different things. I'll have to keep making some more zombies to see what else I can have them do for me. I additionally craft a furnace too, which allows me to craft conical flasks, which are needed to craft ink. My next big goal that I want to reach is being able to craft chapters, which will allow me to craft upgraded prayers, granting me more faith and more money with each sermon. This is especially important since faith costs are increasing, with the resurrection itself costing a whopping 10 faith. The next day was pretty much exclusively resource gathering and taking care of my daily things like burning a body, nothing too exciting. And much like the previous day, I spent most of this time gathering more resources, specifically going to town to grab some oil. In order to make the ink, I need black paint, which is crafted at an alchemy table with ash and oil. Not too hard to acquire, but I also need to craft the alchemy table itself in the first place, which requires advanced conical flasks, which need to be crafted in the upgraded furnace. There's a lot of hoops you have to jump through just to make some ink. Since today was astrologer day, I went ahead and paid him a visit, hoping I could just buy some ink off him, but for whatever reason he refused to trade anything with me. Not sure what step I missed here, but it looks like we're going to have to continue down this painful road of making the ink ourselves. Finally, I have all the resources needed to craft the alchemy bench, quickly setting it up in the basement of the church. And with that, we have the black paint crafted, turning that into ink, and after stepping out to buy some feathers, we have pen and ink. Unfortunately, it turns out you only really need to make one pen and ink, as the item is reusable. Let's just say I wasn't too happy to find out about that. I only had to make one? Oh! In hindsight, it's really not that big of a deal. The most painful part of this process was crafting the alchemy bench in Furnace 2 itself. But still, it felt pretty bad to go through all of that and make so many pen and inks to find out I really don't need this much. I began crafting some of the chapters with the stories I've received from around town whenever I completed quests. These are then turned into the prayers I was talking about before. I decided to go for a combo prayer, which will increase the amount of faith and money I get whenever I perform a sermon. Unfortunately, the quality of the prayer itself wasn't too high. That's the best I can do at the moment, and it's certainly better than the base prayer you get for free. I also purchased some grape seeds from the merchant while he's in town, since a lot of the quests revolve around giving people wine, and at the moment I'm quite behind in my winemaking journey. So I dive into the tech trees, unlocking everything I need and building up the vineyard, fermentation barrels, and grape press. The next day I speak with the Inquisitor, granting him his request for flyers and firewood so that we could burn the witch. Also, yes, I did accidentally record two days as one, but let's not worry about that. He then gives me a new task involving giving him a ton of wine. Glad I started working on that vineyard when I did. I decide to step up my baking skills, going out and buying some milk so I can start crafting cake. This grants me 95 energy, as well as boosting the amount of points I get when researching something temporarily. Useful if I'm ever in need of some quick points. I also crafted some armor, getting ready for the next time I tackle the dungeon. I upgrade my church a little bit before the sermon, netting a whopping 12 faith, certainly doing a lot better than I was before. I go ahead and take advantage of my cake buff as well as my newfound faith to study the brain and the pickaxe, granting me a ton of necessary blue and red points. With these new points, I unlock the vine press and winemaking barrel, one step closer to my winery being completed. The next day was once again just getting everything together, building the vine press and the barrel and whatnot. I go ahead and turn in the ink and paper to the poet who asked for that stuff like a month ago. And of course his next request is wine. I buy some more grape seeds from the merchant, which are quite expensive by the way, and continue to increase my grape yield. I also purchase some hemp rope from Dig and craft the sword, which increases my damage. Maybe now I'm ready to take on the dungeon. I enter the dungeon once more, much more prepared than I was last time, and discover that enemies actually stay dead, so the first level is a complete breeze, just clearing out the few remaining monsters that I left last time. My sword does a lot more damage than the beginner one, and I can actually take a few hits with the armor, making this a much more pleasant trip. On the third floor, I encountered some new enemies besides the bats and slimes, this time some kind of flying creature that just beelines straight towards you. 
They're pretty easy to take down, and drop various powders such as Life Powder and Chaos Powder, presumably used in alchemy. What they lack in strategy and damage, they make up for in numbers, making some rooms a bit tricky to deal with due to the way aggro ranges worked, especially when you added bats to the mix. On the next floor we meet another new enemy, some kind of little metal blade man, who drops the bloody nails that Snake was asking for. Perfect. Their attack isn't too hard to dodge either, but if you do blunder and mess up on the dodge, you're in for some pain. I do eventually die, but I've made a ton of progress, and with one more push I should be able to reach the 5th floor where the other item Snake wanted should be. For the remainder of that day in this one, I spent most of the time doing the chores I didn't have a chance to do while I was down there, such as farming and gathering, my graveyard duties, etc. I really wish the time stopped while you were down in the dungeon. It makes the movement speed of the character even more agonizing, especially with how huge the floor plan is down there. After performing a sermon and taking care of the vineyard, I dived back into the dungeon for a final push. While the runes are definitely getting more tricky with various enemies, it's nothing I can't handle. Finally, we make it to the legendary 5th floor. I'm greeted by some new enemies, blue slimes. The devs really let their creativity go off the rails with this one. I'm hoping for some recolored bats next, personally. I mine some silver and find a chest at the end of the floor, granting me the bucket of blood for Snake. Now we're just playing for bonus points, onto the 6th floor where we're greeted by a recolored bat that drops some kind of acid behind him when he dashed, making that encounter a bit more tricky. I eventually do fall, but I've gotten everything I need from the dungeon for now. I go ahead and resurrect another zombie, this time having him act as a transporter for all of the wood that my other zombie is chopping down, his life now just running between the tree and my home. Certainly makes gathering wood a lot less annoying for me. Finally, the day arrives, and after handing Snake the bucket of blood and bloody nails, he begins the summoning. Unfortunately, all he's able to summon is a chicken, then asking me to find the Necronomicon for him, which the astrologer should be able to help me with. Next, I attempt to complete Miss Charm's request, since Snake is more friendly with me. He informs me that the necklace is being held by the captain of the fort to the north of the town, and I could talk to the hunchback servant there who may be able to help me. Additionally, Snake grants me the stamp needed to start selling meat, and the restoration tools needed to read the next portion of the journal that I gave to the astrologer, meaning we're one step closer to opening the portal and going back home. In preparation for my talk with the astrologer, I also go ahead and purchase the cauldron from the blacksmith and give it to Clotho, hoping that by helping her she'll trade me some acid, which is also needed by the astrologer. I go ahead and sell all of the meat I've stockpiled as well, which gives me about 6 silver, which is a bit of a letdown considering all that went into getting that stamp. After restoring Clotha's memory with some life powder and a bee, she requests that I get her a pumpkin. These people always need something. I ask her about how to restore the taste of our merchant friend, and she informs me that she cannot reverse it since another witch must have cast the spell, but she can give me a recipe to craft the antidote myself. I additionally purchased the acid from her, which costs 5 silver, basically ripping me off, but now we're all prepared to speak with the astrologer soon. The following day, I decide to focus a bit more on my farming skills, and start developing some fertilizer, which will enhance the amount of seeds dropped from my yields as well as potentially granting me higher value veggies. It's some work to get all of the ingredients, including having to craft a hand mixer and mixing up a human brain, but eventually I do get the job done. It's astrologer day, so I head to the lighthouse as soon as possible to deliver the acid and restoration tools. With these items, he's able to read the remainder of the journal passages, revealing I need to gather a necklace with a sapphire, a golden angle, and an endless notebook. Along with this, it's revealed that the astrologer had a child 25 years ago with a gypsy woman named Esmeralda. If I can help him locate his long-lost child, he promises to tell me where to find the necklace and golden angle. I additionally ask about the Necronomicon for Snake, and he informs me that he gave it to his friend the Fisherman. For the Necronomicon, the Fisherman makes a simple request, a few maggots, of which I have plenty of from all of the gardening I've been doing. After gathering the Necronomicon, I utilize the fertilizer I made to enhance the yield of my vineyard, hoping to start acquiring gold tier grapes. Now it's time to enhance my mining facilities. I put down an iron ore storage in my home base, and add a porter station to the quarry, so now I won't have to make the trip up there every time I need a bit of iron. I head to the fort to see if I could find this cool, cool fella, and unfortunately they won't allow anyone inside. However, every night he comes out and goes to the nearby woods, apparently to make a living, 
whatever that means. I then go to talk to the Gypsy Baron, who will tell me about his sister, Esmeralda, on one condition. If I get the Inquisitor to release one of his friends. After I deliver the wine to the Inquisitor, that shouldn't be too hard. Additionally, my first batch of Silver Star wine is finally finished crafting, which I quickly deliver to Jerry, who doesn't really give me anything for it, but at least that quest is done. I additionally give one to the poet at the Dead Horse, but that just ends up being an endless loop quest where for one bottle of wine, he'll give me a Silver Star story, which isn't really worth it. I go on to sell a fair amount of wine to Horodric, since he's quite generous, buying each bottle for one silver. The rest I save for the Inquisitor. The next night, I meet Kokul in the woods, he tells me that the son of the commander may have the necklace, but doesn't elaborate more than that. So I guess that's a dead end, it's kind of unclear what I'm supposed to do from here. However, I am able to craft the medicine for the merchant, which is literally just spices, bringing back his sense of taste. His next request for me is to craft 5 gold star dinners, which involves crafting multiple gold star quality food items, something that I'm currently nowhere near capable of. Thankfully I've already started crafting some fertilizer, which is absolutely necessary to accomplish this goal. In order to accomplish this, I'll need to gather gold star vegetables, and what I currently have isn't going to cut it. Wheat, carrots, beets, and cabbage do not have a quality ranking, so I need to gather gold star onions, pumpkins, or lentils. Of course, no one sells these gold seeds naturally, and in order to even get the bronze or silver tier of these seeds, I need to unlock higher tier items from the farmer. This requires purchasing a lot of items from him, which I don't really have the money to do. Something off to brainstorm on. Snake finally arrives, initially taken aback at all of the work that needs to be done for the ritual to be a success. Luckily, our hero is a great hype man, and after a bit of encouragement, he reveals the next step needed for his ritual. We have to increase the spook factor of our ritual area to 20, when it currently sits at 1. So a lot of work to do here. However, once all this ritual stuff is over, he promises to give me his endless notebook, putting me one step closer to going home. The ingredients for the ritual decorations are annoying but not too difficult to get, mostly just skulls and some polished stone. I turn in the wine to the Inquisitor, who in return reveals some background info about himself. Apparently he lost his family during some kind of blast years ago, and that's why he's so against witches and just loves burning them. Honestly, fair enough. His next request is that I create a tent and serve beers and burgers at the next witch burning to increase attendance. He additionally unlocks the western half of the graveyard for me, so I now have more room to build stuff. Unfortunately, there's a ton of trees over there, and they drop about 50 logs each, and they never despawn. So I guess I'll just have to deal with all of the logs in my graveyard. I spent most of this day gathering materials and figuring out everything I need to get this polished stone. I also sell my previous wine haul, netting a hefty sum of 22 silver. After setting up the tent, it's revealed I need to get gold star burgers and beer, which, as you might suspect, I'm not prepared to make. Most of my holdups now revolve around gathering high quality food items, so farming will be my focus for a while. I discovered that in order to even make beer, you need to have hops, which you can only get from Miller, the farmer on the northern part of the farm, who I've never even talked to. The hops are also locked behind tier 2 and 3, and I simply don't have the means to increase these selling tiers right now. So it's time to turn to prayer for a solution. With the prayer of prosperity, after a sermon a commercial blessing will be dropped, which can be sold to merchants for one silver and increases their tier level drastically. So I head back home and get to work on crafting the perfect prayer for my needs. After grinding some blue points to afford a buff that would increase the quality of my writing, I eventually have what it takes to craft a silver quality prayer of prosperity, which will give me two commercial blessings, meaning I'll be able to level up both farmer shops after my next sermon, which sadly isn't for a while. I go in and upgrade my storage space in the morgue, since the donkey won't drop off more bodies if it's full. I continue to grind out more blue points to afford the upgrade that will allow me to start crafting the polished stones needed to advance Snake's story, as well as hoping to start slowly increasing the quality of my graveyard. Day 63 is the only day that I don't have anything in the script for, since truly nothing happens, but it felt weird to not say anything since I have something written for all the other days, so here, here we go, here, you get this. Next, I go ahead and start working on my church, as I need to reach a quality of 50 anyway, and increasing the amount of faith I receive with each sermon certainly won't hurt. I manage to increase the church's quality all the way to 48 before I run out of things I can currently improve on. 
After delivering the sermon, I quickly head over to Miller and the Farmer, who will have their next tier of items unlocked for me tomorrow. I also go ahead and create another zombie with the faith I received from my sermon, setting him up at the stone mine, since I'm constantly running out of stone and having to run back and forth collecting more. Wanting to explore this town everyone keeps mentioning, I journey south of the village, excited to meet some new characters and... Well, I guess I won't be entering the town. Apparently all of the magical items I need are going to have to be acquired by Snake, since some powerful being refuses to let me enter the town. After some effort, I was finally able to craft everything needed for the blood fountains in the ritual zone, quickly gathering the required blood to give it the full effect, granting me 13 spooky points. A few more skulls and pumpkins and we'll be good to go. I go ahead and outright buy one pumpkin and some onion seeds from the farmer. A gold tier onion is required to make a gold tier burger, so I'll have to utilize fertilizer to slowly increase the quality of my onion yield over time. I additionally purchased some hops and hop seeds from Miller, in preparation for the beer. After crafting a lot more fertilizer, I begin my real farming journey of creating only the highest quality crops. I additionally purchase even more seeds from both farmers, including lentinol and pumpkin seeds. You never know when I may need to have gold tiers of those veggies as well. Are lentils even veggies? I, uh, I don't know. I guess it'd be more of a grain. Hmm. Alright, I looked it up. Apparently they're a legumi. Legume. They're not a grain. My morgue is starting to fill up, so I create a little mass burning to start off my day. And for the next few days, my life consisted of buying more seeds, taking the meat and skull from the bodies, and slowly increasing the quality of my crops. I finally have the materials I needed to make a gold star burger, but I required five to serve for the next burning, and you can only craft four from one onion, so it looks like I need to make one more. I also go ahead and give Clotho that pumpkin that she's been asking for, in return granting me some new recipes that will be needed for those dinners that the merchant requested. After playing around with various combos to achieve a gold star dinner rating, I decided to go for a gold tier onion rings, a bowl of lentils, and a cake. The onion rings would be easy since I'm already focusing on harvesting onions anyway, and the cake is quite easy to make as well and I've already made a few of them before. Once I have high quality lentils, I should be able to start making those dinners. Some significant progress is made on the ritual area thanks to the pumpkins I've been getting, meaning I only need a few more pumpkins and skulls before it's complete. I start taking the graveyard more seriously, upgrading some of the tombstones to higher quality ones, changing some of the grave fences, and even fixing up the surrounding fence to the graveyard. When I enter the dead horse, Hordrick can smell the onions on me, granting me some new recipes, including onion rings which I do need for those dinners that I mentioned. I've made all of the necessary burgers and have enough high quality hops to craft the perfect beer, meaning I'm all set up and ready to go for the next time the Inquisitor is in town. I'm also able to finish upgrading the ritual area, finally spooky enough to meet Snake's standards. It looks more like a Halloween store, but considering we were using real human skulls and blood, I, I guess it's kind of spooky. The fence to the graveyard also receives yet another upgrade, increasing the overall quality of the graveyard by 20 points, now putting us at 66. This is still a far cry from 200, but at least we've made some progress. I go ahead and move all of the logs into a corner as well, not really necessary at all, but it's been bugging me a lot, so at least things look kind of orderly, sort of. Today is the day of the next witch burning, and everything is ready. The Inquisitor is also quite happy with me now, willing to release the friend of the Gypsy Baron. I even convinced the Inquisitor to stop having guards at the portal while he's not here, so now it should be easier to open up that portal once everything is prepared. During the burning, everyone is super happy with the beer and burgers, and thankfully no one questions how the graveyard keeper managed to acquire so much meat in the middle of a meat shortage. This nets me 33 silver, which is kind of a ton for me, and 4 faith orbs. Definitely worth it. I can even do this again next week, which I definitely plan on doing. I then return to the Gypsy Baron, who reveals that Esmeralda herself is long gone, but her daughter is still alive and in this very village, under a new name, Miss Charm. That's right, the astrologer's daughter is our very own Miss Charm, who's been having us run around town for her necklace. Truly a twist no one saw coming. I read online that I could potentially get gold star stories if I set up a random text generator with a zombie, so I quickly get that set up, 
thinking this is kind of like the equivalent of putting a typewriter in front of a monkey and hoping he somehow writes the Iliad. I reveal to the astrologer that Miss Charm is his daughter, and he surprisingly isn't too phased. He pleads that I speak to Miss Charm for him to see if there's a chance she'd be willing to talk to him. If I can pull off this reunion, he'll reveal the location of the Golden Angle. I perform another prayer of prosperity, since having a few of those blessings of commerce on hand could potentially be useful. With all of the gold onions and gold pumpkins, I'm able to craft the perfect dinner. Nothing sounds tastier than onion rings, pumpkin soup, and an entire cake. If you're wondering why I'm using pumpkin soup instead of lentil soup, it's because I have no clue how to get the lentil soup recipe, but the pumpkin one kind of just fell in my lap, so that's why I went with that. I inform Miss Charm that I know where the necklace is, and I'll try my best to get it for her. And for whatever reason, that's enough to complete the quest. Moving forward. Her next request is that I get Miss Chain's perfume, who is the wife of Horadric. Apparently, she isn't a fan of Miss Charm, so the duty falls to me. News of the previous witch burning reaches Horadric's ears, apparently not believing I can make such an amazing beer. I'll have to bring him some so he can try. Additionally, I use one of the blessings of commerce on the lighthouse keeper, since unlocking his tears would grant me stronger fishing rods. Fishing hasn't really been that important, but I imagine at some point it could be, so I might as well do this now. With all the money I made with my side gig as a witch burning vendor, I purchase a trade license, hoping to start making even more money with the merchant. I slide a gold tier beer to Horadric, who's so impressed that he gives me a new recipe to create a mug of mead, the nectar of the gods. Next, I deliver the dinners to the merchant, who promises to tell me about it next week. We also open up shop, where I can now create crates of goods which a merchant will sell. I don't go too far into this right now, so we'll come back to it later. I also purchase some silk off of him, since for my final upgrade to reach 50 quality points in the church, I need to create cushioned benches. After crafting that, we'll have finally reached our goal. Then we'll just have to deal with hitting 200 quality points in the graveyard, and then we'll finally have our cathedral. Snake has finally arrived and is quite impressed with my decorations. His next request is for a Damask Sword, the strongest weapon in the game, and all the way at the end of the smithing tech tree. I can additionally purchase it from the Hunchback from the Mountain Fort, but it costs quite a lot, around 1 gold and 50 silver. Neither option looking favorable. We'll put a pin in Snake's storyline for now. He did, however, help me locate some of the items that are needed for the main quest, including the Mirror of Pride, which is held by the Bishop, an Eternal Burning Coal, which is held by the Inquisitor, and a Salty Fork, held by the Merchant. In order to pry these items from everyone, I'll have to increase my relationship with them to 100, so definitely late game stuff. To easily increase my graveyard quality, I place down some lawns, which look kind of ugly, but they add 4 points each and are pretty easy to make, just requiring peat and stone. Another witch burning, another 30 silver in my pocket. I desperately want to achieve my cathedral dreams before my first 100 days, so I spend a ton of time crafting grave decorations using polished stone and focusing on other ways I can reach the lofty goal of 200. I craft the crate factory, which allows me to package vegetables or goods for various prices. Ideally, once I'm harvesting nothing but gold vegetables, this should be a really consistent money farm, allowing me to make a ton of money every time the merchant comes. Lacking high quality veggies, I send out a box of steel parts, just to see how it works. I take a quick visit to the dead horse, to drop off some burial certificates and to discuss Miss Chain's perfume. She promises to give me the perfume if I deliver food to her sister who lives in the swamp, aka Clotho. Additionally, she wants me to capture a dozen frogs for her next perfume. Easy. Considering all the bodies I've been burning, I build a stone columbrium to house some urns, as well as granting me 12 quality points. The next morning, I deliver the food to Clotho, as well as purchasing 10 frogs off of her, now only needing to fish up two more for Miss Chain. It ends up being an extremely tedious and obnoxious task, trying to figure out what body of water the fish is in, the right fishing rod, and the right fishing bait. But eventually, I do get the two frogs, deliver them to Miss Chain, and gain the perfume for Miss Charm. Upon delivering the perfume to Miss Charm, she informs me she's visiting the royal palace and needs a romantic story written for the opening of her concert, meaning I now need to give her one of my valuable gold tier stories, of which I don't have any currently. Awesome. I also go ahead and deliver the crate that I sent down to the trading office, making my first delivery in the trading gig. I place down some more lawns for some easy points, making it all the way to quality 157. 
when suddenly a lightning strikes some of my graves. Apparently, I'm not doing a good enough job of getting rid of the high sin bodies in the graveyard, upsetting our ghost friend. This ends up setting us back to 148 quality points, quite annoying if I'm being honest. I take some time to take out the bodies from the ground, taking out fat and blood to increase its quality and then burying it again. The merchant won't discuss the dinner with me until I increase our relationship more, meaning I need to get my company to a popularity of 3 and I need to sell a total of 7 crates. Something to worry about once I've completed my graveyard duties. Another day focused on my farming duties, gathering carrots for the donkey and whatnot. After serving more burgers and beer at the witch burning, I continue working hard on improving the graveyard, and finally make it all the way to quality level 203. This means the next time we see the bishop, we should be able to finally upgrade to a cathedral. Since I've still been running out of iron, I send yet another zombie down into the mines to start gathering, hopefully doubling my iron supply. I manage to craft the next level of desk, which requires some annoying items such as lenses, but anything I write on here will be of slightly higher quality, something I certainly don't mind. I go ahead and craft a prayer of imagination, which, after being performed, would boost my writing skill for a period of time. Something that is necessary when it comes to guaranteeing gold tier writing. Finally, the day has arrived and I'm eager to upgrade my church. That's when the bishop smacks me in the face, being so impressed by the headstones I've crafted that he demands I craft three more statues of him, including one for this very graveyard. There's always something. I end up crafting a prayer that increases the amount of donations I receive, since I want more money, and honestly I kind of forgot about the prayer of inspiration I crafted the other day which would have been really useful when trying to craft a prayer like this. I start investigating how to craft these statues for the bishop, and realize there's kind of a lot to it. Not only do I need a gold tier chisel, I also need multiple buffs that are unlocked via tech trees for even a chance at a gold tier statue. If I ever hope to complete this cathedral in 100 days, I need to get started on this now. So, I gather some marble and begin mining some coal for some easy red points, unlocking the mason perk. With this, I have a 50% chance of crafting a gold tier statue, and that's the best I can do if I want to complete this in only 7 days. I managed to get a gold story from the bishop after showing him the church and the graveyard, and deliver it to Miss Charm, whose next request is to convince the farmer to let her take his daughter to the royal concert. I also informed her that I may know who her father is, but she has no interest in knowing him, since she considers him a deceitful man after abandoning her mother. Hopefully this won't deter the astrologer from helping me. I speak with the farmer who initially tells me to screw off, but his son informs me that if I help with fixing up the mill, he may be more lenient. After taking a look, I need someone who's good with angles to come up with a way to fix it, and the first person that comes to mind is none other than the astrologer. Now, in order to get the gold chisel, I need steel parts, which I'm still quite a ways away from crafting in the tech tree. Alternatively, I can buy the needed parts off the blacksmith, since they aren't too expensive and I need to work fast. After returning home, I see that I only have a 40% chance to get a gold chisel, but fortunately, I get it on my first try. I then begin making the statues, only having a 50% chance of successfully crafting a gold tier statue. Fortunately, I'm no stranger to safe scumming, so I save beforehand and reload if I don't get what I want. Honestly, I have the resources to just keep crafting them until I get all three statues that I need, but since we're on a bit of a time crunch, I figure this is for the best. With everything involving the cathedral out of the way, I start looking at the trading business, and see it's really easy to increase my popularity, all it takes is 10 flyers for one point. With each increase in popularity, I can sell more crates weekly, up to 10. So I begin crafting a ton of these flyers, rapidly increasing my popularity level, since they really aren't too difficult to make. It's also the day of the Inquisitor, but something's wrong. Apparently, the king is trying to put a stop to the witch burnings, something about them being barbaric or whatever, but we can't have that since I'm making a lot of money from them. So, the Inquisitor gives me a new task. I have to provide evidence of a dark cult to the king by harvesting a dark brain, a dark heart, and dark intestines. These will be randomly dropped from bodies that come into my morgue, so it'll be a waiting game for these. Sadly, this cuts off my 33 silver per week, so it looks like I'll need to find another way to make some bank. I set up another zombie up in the quarry, now automatically giving me marble, which I think may come in handy in the future. I continue to make more flyers and increase my crate capacity. I then discover I can sell crates of nails relatively easily, since I have a fair amount of iron laying around. 
So I use up all of my iron and crafting an absurd amount of nails, putting them all into crates and sending them down. I inform the astrologer of what Miss Charm said to me, promising him I'll see if there's any way I can help fix their relationship. He also hands over the blueprints to fix up the mill. Additionally, he informs me that Esmeralda's daughter may have the necklace, which I already knew, and that the gold angle is most likely still in the mountain fort with the rest of his belongings after the infamous blast occurred. So for now, both items are out of my reach. I put another zombie down by my crates, since after carrying one all the way to and from the trading station, I was exhausted. Now, whenever I send crates down, he'll automatically take them to where they need to be. My farm plots are also expanded, as ideally soon here I'll start yielding lots of high quality veggies that I can sell. I hand over the statues to the bishop, and he places one right in the center of the pathway to the church, and finally we have our cathedral built. Of course, I need to be an aristocrat to have the grand ceremony for the cathedral, which is absurdly expensive sitting at 12 gold, but at the very least we have our cathedral built. The next thing I do is fix up the mill for Miller, who will now allow me to use it for free whenever I want to convert wheat to flour. With that complete, the farmer is willing to allow Miss Charm to take his daughter to the royal concert. The next thing she requires of me is that I become an aristocrat as well, so that I can officially sign for her and the farmer's daughter. Another dead end for now. I manage to find a dark heart in one of the bodies dropped off, and go ahead and build the embalming table. This will allow me to increase the quality of bodies, not only helping the quality of the graveyard, but apparently how many white skulls the body has affects how efficient they are as zombies, which would have been really, really useful to know before day 97. I also talk to the merchant, who's happy to see my popularity has grown. I also have quite a few crates to sell, so I should make a decent chunk of change from today. After the merchant is gone, I make an outstanding total of 90 silver, putting me at 1 gold and 94 silver in total. Thinking on my feet, I quickly head into the forest and purchase the Damask Sword off the Hunchback, allowing me to continue Snake's storyline sooner than I had initially thought. After delivering the sword, Snake's followers show up, where he takes advantage of my immortality by slaying me in front of his followers, claiming that he has the ability to control life and death and would bring me back after sacrificing me. Lo and behold, I show back up, impressing all of his cult followers. With Snake promising a great conquest, they leave, clearly moved by Snake and eager to follow his orders. Afterwards, I decide to take a little nap when suddenly Snake awakens me, saying that a vampire hunter is after him. Apparently, he's going to burn down my church if he finds out what's going on in my cellar. So, we have to strike first. Snake sets up a distraction at the town brothel, and we sit and wait for him to show up at the top of Witch Hill. And a long time did we wait. Finally, tailing right behind Donkey, the hunter shows up, and Snake shows him who's boss. Snake tasks me with cleaning up the mess, so I quickly mine the rock and carry the body back to the morgue. Snake promises me one more task after this and to meet him back at the ritual zone, but when I arrive it's already too late in the day and Snake is gone. After an eventful day like that, I spend the remainder of my time focusing on a simple but long-term goal I've been wanting to achieve. I want a speed potion. In order to craft the speed potion, you need to have the secondary alchemy table, which requires a ton of late game building materials and is one of the most difficult structures to build in the game, according to the wiki. They've been taunting us with the speed potion ingredients ever since we gained entry to the church basement, and by god I'll have that made within 100 days. Finally, on the final day, I've gathered all of the necessary materials to craft the upgraded alchemy table. With a pinch of acceleration powder, a dab of chaos solution, and a drop of blood, we've done it. I am now officially moderately faster than I was before for 10 minutes. Just in time to enjoy our final night in Graveyard Keeper. We accomplished a lot during our 100 days, taking the pitiful graveyard and church all the way from a pathetic shack in the middle of nowhere to a full-blown cathedral, housing finely crafted statues and monuments. We've enslaved the zombies to do our bidding, forcing them into the mines and quarry, bringing me endless resources to do with as I please. We visited many different people and places and helped everyone with their endless fetch quests. But still, we haven't completed our journey, we still need to return home. Thank you so much to everyone who's watched all the way to the very end. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you want to see the conclusion of this journey. I've also additionally purchased all of the DLC for the game, so we'll be able to see everything this game has to offer. Hope to see you next time.